Hello everyone, my name is Isha Chandelier. I am a first year MBBA student from GSS Medical College and I will be presenting a case study under the topic of clinical physiology. Here is the case I will be presenting. A 21 year old man presents to a rural emergency center with a one day history of progressive stiffness of the neck and jaw, difficulty swallowing, stiff shoulders and back, and a rigid abdomen. Upon further questioning, the patient reports that the stiff jaw was the first symptom, followed by stiff neck and dysphagia. On examination, he is noted to have stiffness in the neck, shoulder and arm muscles. He has a grimace on his face that he cannot stop volunteering and an arched back from contracted back muscles. Now I will be focusing on the differential diagnosis. How did I approach this diagnosis? What is the most probable diagnosis and how do we manage this case? This is the image I got from the case. So from the case we got to know about the physical examination of the patient which is as follows. He had stiffness in his neck, shoulder and arm muscles. He had a grimace on his face which he wasn't able to stop volunteering. He had an arched back which is also known as opisthotonus. But the most important symptom which the patient first observed was a cystic jaw. So this is a very important point as it is noted. So here are some observations which I made in the image record. Now as you can see the patient has mostly rigid muscles, rigid abdomen muscles an arched back that is of his thoughtiness. He has stiff arm muscles, stiff neck and shoulder and a grimace on his face. Yes, so we can also say that most of his muscles are rigid and stiff. So, from the symptoms and the physical examination, we can say that it all indicates towards a neurological disease, most probably due to a lower motor neuron defect. Hence, the diseases which might be possible in this patient are as follows. Meningitis, strychnine poisoning and tetanus. Now when we talk about meningitis, it is a rare disease involving infection of the brain or spinal cord. So the following symptoms are seen in the patient. Confusion. Fever, headache with nausea, stiff neck, lack of appetite and thirst, skin rashes and seizures. Now, the only symptom we see similar to the case is of stiff neck. And if laboratory tests are performed, in, we see pre presence of infection in the cerebrospinal cord. That was meningitis and now we will talk about strychnine poisoning. Basically caused due to toxin from this plant Strychnox nux formica, which when inhaled or absorbed, the symptoms appear in 15 to 16 minutes. We see these symptoms in the patient. Uncontrollable arching of neck and back, rigid arms and legs, jaw tightness, Initial consciousness and awareness of symptoms, painful spasms, muscle pain and soreness, dark urine, difficulty breathing. Now we can see the highlighted symptoms are observed in the patient. And so now we will move on to the next disease, tetanus. Now, tetanus is a bacterial infection caused by Clostridium tetanus, which enters through a cut or deep wound. And then this bacteria spreads its spores which release toxins like tetanospasmin. And the following symptoms are observed in the patient. Stiff jaw, sudden involuntary muscle tightening, painful muscle stiffness all over the body, trouble swallowing, seizures, fever and sweating, changes in blood pressure and fast heart. So we see the highlighted symptoms are observed in the patient as well. So, up 
after a brief discussion on the diseases which were possible, I would like to explain on how I reached the most probable diagnosis of the patient. Now, when we talk about meningitis, out of all the symptoms which are observed in meningitis, only stiff neck was similar to that of the patient's description. So, now we can rule out the possibility of meningitis in the patient as in meningitis, the other symptoms are not observed. But now, when we talk about strychnine poisoning and tetanus, both have common symptoms similar to that the patient is suffering from. But if we talk about the differences in the strychnine poisoning and tetanus, we can definitely reach to the most probable diagnosis. Now, uh, I did say in physical examination that the most important point to be noted was the first symptom observed by the patient was the stiff jaw. Now, the basic difference in strychnine poisoning and tetanus is that stiff jaw is seen first only in cases of tetanus. Yes, it is seen in strychnine poisoning too, but its appearance is a lot later as compared to the other symptoms. So, the first symptom of tetanus, yes, it is stiff jaw. Also, we can see in the picture that the patient's muscles are rigid in between fits, which is only seen in tetanus. As in strychnine poisoning, between fits, the muscles are completely relaxed. So yes, we can conclude that the most probable diagnosis of this case study is tetanus. So when we talk about the management, the treatment is as follows. Supportive care is needed till toxin attaching to the gangliocyte is metabolized. We can also give human tetanus immunoglobin which helps in neutralizing the toxins antibiotics and drugs to control muscle spasm like curare and tazepon are also given. A tetanus vaccination is also given and if the infection is serious, a respirator may also be needed. When we talk about prevention, a DPT vaccine is given after birth on 2, 4, 6 and 15 months and 4 to 6 years of age. A tetanus and diphtheria vaccine at 14 to 16 years of age, which may be repeated every 10 years throughout life. So this is the end of my case study. Thank you for your patience.